All right, guys, it is time to talk about the tech that we don't use in our benchmarks, upscalers like DLSS, FSR, and XCSS. I'm gonna be giving a high level explanation on what upscalers are, their pros and cons, and when to use them. So let's just dive right on in after we pay some bills. EK Waterblock's Nucleus Series AIOs are a closed loop and maintenance free way to keep your CPU nice and cool for maximum performance. Compatible with the latest Intel and AMD CPUs, the Nucleus AIO comes in both the Lux Edition featuring ARGB lighting, as well as a dark version for a clean, light free aesthetic and an ultra clean look. Daisy chain fans allow for a super easy install, while the thicker cold plate provides an improved cooling experience versus the competitors. To see the full list of specs and sizes, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So in pretty much every case, you're gonna be running your game at the native or actual resolution of your panel. In this case, we're gonna be using a 4K panel, but um, it doesn't matter. Whatever resolution your panel is, that's what's, that's what's called the native or actual resolution of the panel. Higher resolutions are of course harder to run. 4K is four times the pixels of 1080p. That means four times the pixels that the GPU has to process. Now, one way to improve performance is to lower the resolution of the game. Obviously, rendering it with less pixels is gonna get you more performance. The problem with running at a resolution that's not the monitor's native or actual resolution, you're gonna be relying on the monitor's internal built-in scaler, which usually monitor scalers are not the best quality. They're just designed for, oh no, this computer, this office PC can't run 4K or whatever, so, but I just need to see an image on the screen and I want it to be full size. So like I mentioned before, if you're running a low resolution, of course, you're gonna get more performance. But now if we can't change the resolution, if we're locked at the native resolution of our panel, again, in this case, we're gonna be running 4K, that's a pretty tough resolution to run for pretty much every card. What you could do is start lowering graphic settings in the game. You could turn down post-processing, you could turn down textures, lighting, all that sort of stuff. But what if we could have our cake and eat it too? What if we could run the game at a lower resolution, but have an image quality that's better than just using the monitors internal crappy scaler. And so that's where this current crop of AI enhanced GPU based scaling technology comes in. But the difference between these scalers and the one that's built into a monitor is that they use their own AI proprietary technology for each, all three of the companies had a different approach to it, but roughly the same concept of let's use AI to make the final image quality that's been upscaled from the lower resolution look significantly better than if you had just resized it with a we'll call it a naive scaler, which is just, it doesn't do any AI stuff, it doesn't do any sharpening, it's just fit these pixels to these pixels. So what you'll see whenever you use any of these three upscalers is usually a setting that has quality settings in there. Obviously going from a higher internal resolution down to a lower internal resolution. What I don't like about these uh, scalers is that they don't generally show you what the actual internal res rendering resolution is. However, they do provide what the scaling factor is for each setting. It's just, you gotta go dig for it on their website. They, they're, they're not, for some reason, they're not really that upfront about exactly what resolution it's running. I, I think it's weird. But anyway, so we got our list of options to pick from based on how, how low do you want the internal resolution to be? But the trade-off is the lower, obviously the lower resolution, the higher the performance. Okay, so we're gonna be taking a look at the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark run. Um, I'm running this on RT overdrive mode, which is the absolute hardest uh, possible setting to run, um, mainly because I want to lo fully load our RTX 4090 and make it struggle and see what happens. Now we're gonna be using DLSS as our example, but all the advice applies to XESS and FSR as well. So rendering at native 4K, our 4090 got 21 FPS in the Cyberpunk benchmark at RT Overdrive, which obviously we gotta bring that up now. If we rendered all the way down at 1080p, we would get all the way up to 68 FPS. So that's, that's a pretty decent gain of about 40 FPS. 47, almost 50 FPS. However, now we're rendering at 1080p and upscaling it to a 4K monitor, so it looks pretty ugly. There's a lot of detail missing and just weird, gross monitor scaling issues. So now let's try 4K native output resolution with DLSS performance mode. Performance is a 50% render scale, which happens to also be 1080p, so we can see what a 1080p native output looks like scaled up versus a DLSS 1080p internal resolution scaled up with that DLSS tech. So at 4K, rendering internally at a 1080p resolution with DLSS performance, we are pulling 63 FPS. So it's a little lower, you'll notice, than the just 1080p native render on its own. And that's because all these upscalers take a little bit of GPU time to uh, do their thing. So you're not going to get exactly the same performance as what you would have gotten with the lower resolution. However, you're sacrificing a 
tiny bit of performance for a significant boost in image quality versus that lower resolution. You can expect similar results from FSR and XCSS, although to my eyes, FSR looks a little bit blurrier for a little bit worse performance versus DLSS. XCSS is interesting because it has different code paths depending on what GPU you're running it on. So of course, it's going to look significantly better if you're running Intel XCSS on an Intel card. I guess the advice would be if the game has all three of them, just use whichever upscaler is uh, by the brand of GPU that you own. So if you have an NVIDIA card, obviously use DLSS. If you have an AMD card, FSR and Intel XCSS. Now DLSS 3 has a new feature called frame generation, which the other two upscalers don't have. Going back to how these upscalers work, basically you're, again, rendering at a lower resolution and then the GPU does fancy magic tech to do the work for the rest of the pixels in that scene. Frame generation, what frame generation does is every other frame is completely rendered by the upscaler with the GPU doing no work and no game math or any anything like that. It's not necessarily doubling your FPS, but with frame generation on, uh, we saw 97 FPS in that same benchmark. Now the problem with frame generation is it's not going to feel like 97 FPS because each fully generated frame does not contain any new information from the game. Your effective latency, basically what you feel like the lag between when you move a mouse and when your screen moves, is going to feel a little bit worse with frame generation on. So I wouldn't recommend running frame gen if it's a competitive type game, if it's a multiplayer PVP type game or anything where your reflexes are of utmost importance. Obviously in Cyberpunk, it's a story-based single player game. So I, I tend to take the pretty eye candy over the frame rate, but again, that's the dope thing about these scalers is it lets you dial in how blurry or how sharp do you want this image to be versus how much performance do you want to gain. NZXT's Build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Don't want to spec it yourself? Then choose from BLD's pre-configured player PC systems designed to fit your needs and budget. To see the full lineup and specs of the NZXT BLD Player Series pre-built PCs, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so now we have our cake and we're sort of eating it too. We got our FPS back and also a sharper image quality versus if we were actually running at that lower resolution. So why don't we use these in our benchmarks? The obvious is that you're not rendering at the resolution you say you are anymore. Um, if I have DLSS performance on, that means it's a 50% scale. So 4K is actually being rendered at 1080p. So if I'm running 4K and I turn on DLSS balance, that's a 58% render scale. So that means that I'm gonna be rendering at about 2.2K. Now I think the reason that they name these quality balance performance instead of just giving you the resolution is because the GPU manufacturers may change whatever scaling factor each name, each like, you know, preset is based off of. So even if we were to pick like say, okay, this is just gonna be DLSS balance across the board or whatever, if NVIDIA just decides randomly that balance is gonna be 75% of render res now instead of 66% or whatever it was, then obviously we got a problem now because the charts don't line up and you're not actually seeing what the what the proper, you know, raw horsepower of a card is. So again, in our testing, what we do is we disable any of the scalers to kind of kick kick them out of the equation and make sure that all of our testing and all of our data is actually just done on what performance does this card achieve when it's actually rendering 3,840 pixels by 2,100 and crap, I forgot what it was, 2160, 2,160 pixels. You know what I mean? Like you gotta render all the pixels for you to actually test something at something that you're saying it is, if that makes any sense. In addition, all three of them, DLSS, XESS, and FSR, they all have different workloads on the card. They can take up different amounts of GPU time. And so it's not really fair if we're running XASS on an Intel card versus DLSS on an NVIDIA card in the same benchmark uh, chart. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword because obviously, as we've seen in this video, upscalers can give you a lot of performance back for not that much loss in image quality. However, it does make it difficult to test cards apples to apples, and so that's why we don't use it in our benchmarks. So yeah, this is why I mentioned in that laptop review a while back that modern gaming is basically divorced from the panel resolution. Uh, most game consoles that output 4K almost always in any case, unless the game is very, very, very easy to run, are not rendering at actual 4K resolution. They're gonna be using FSR because AMD uh, pretty much owns the console market with their APUs. Like all the consoles nowadays are, are AMD APUs except for the Switch, poor little Tegra. But anyway, most consoles that say that they're outputting 4K are only just outputting 4K, but they're rendering at a significantly lower internal resolution. Um, anytime you look at 
deep dives of console games and their performance and stuff like that. You get the pixel peepers that actually go in and count how many pixels is the game for real rendering versus what it says it's rendering. And in almost all cases, it's not actually rendering at 4K. We're still getting acceptable image quality and sharp UI because of the fact that the output resolution is still at the native resolution of the panel. So yeah, it's free performance. However, it comes with a few caveats in that it's not gonna get you exactly the same performance as you would running a lower resolution. You, you saw that we had to sacrifice a little bit of our frame rate to get the DLSS magic to have its time on the GPU to do its thing. But the good thing is that it's user customizable. You get to pick how much more performance do I want and how much blurrier do I want to deal with this image? So settings like ultra performance on FSR or DLSS are gonna blow your mind with the performance you'll get, but you'll probably be a little unsatisfied with how the image looks like in motion. These AI-based magical upscalers can only do so much to repair an image because essentially what you're doing is you're rendering less information in a scene, significantly less information in a scene, and you're telling the GPU, hey, just make stuff up and make sure it just looks good enough to a human eye at 1 60th or less of a second that they won't freak out and think an AI drew this picture. So again, to wrap things all up, upscalers are freaking awesome. Extra performance, better image quality than running the game at a lower resolution, and they're user customizable. So you get to dial in that exact trade-off that you want from performance versus image quality. And if the game has more than one upscaler, don't forget to experiment. In fact, here's a random use case. I've been playing a lot of Death Stranding on my Steam Deck, and I actually prefer the image quality of XESS over FSR in that game for some reason. XESS is a little harder to run on the AMD APU that's in the Steam Deck because it's not AMD scaler. However, I personally prefer the image quality over it and the performance is there. So when the game has multiple options and multiple scalers and settings and all that sort of stuff, just play around with it. Try out different options. If the game has a benchmark, that's even better because then you can really see exactly how much performance you're gaining. But I can't personally tell you what is acceptable image quality to your eyes, so that's gonna be on you guys. Um, I tend to prefer less performance and a cleaner image, but I know a lot of people out there want to enable all the bells and whistles, but also don't really want to sacrifice the performance. And so that's where an upscaler comes in. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it all up. Sound off in the comments down below if you guys prefer just the cleanest native rendering only for these eyes, or if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of blurriness to get a lot more performance out of it. Again, all three of these upscalers are awesome. Um, it's, it's cool to see this sort of tech in all of the brands as well. So we don't really have a single GPU brand that's left out of this game. And I love that it's just all user customizable. Again, that's that's just my favorite part of it is that you get to pick that trade off. Sound off in the comments down below how you guys would pick that trade off. Do you want more FPS and you don't care how blurry it is? Or do you want the cleanest, highest quality native rendering? And I don't care if it's only 20 FPS on a 4090. Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you in the next one.